Oh my god, DA, get in here right now! Yes, Dark Master, how may I serve you? I just found out that the Illuminati is using estrogen mimickers to make us all gay or trans or whatever. They want to control the population and our minds. Oh my god. Master, wh where did you learn this? It doesn't sound right. Why, I heard it from a transgender person themselves, so it must be true. Her name is Autumn Asphodel, but she is not alone. There are many, many popular voices saying what a mental disorder transgenderism is, how these people are crazy, how it's an Illuminati plot to control us. It's all over, and it's true. Why, they are putting estrogen mimickers in everything, in our food, in our packaging, in our weed killers. Why, they're putting chemicals in the water that turn the frickin' frogs gay! But Master, are, aren't you transgender? I mean, hasn't transgenderism been around longer than the Illuminati? No, I'm not transgender. I'm a hermaphrodite. I was created this way by Yahweh. How dare you lump me in with those disgusting perverts? I have a medical condition. Well, isn't it possible that Yahweh created these people the same? I mean, isn't it possible that they have a medical condition? Well, in my case, I am both male and female. I'm not a crazy, mentally disturbed pervert like these transgenders. Oh, what the fuck, Master? You just can't go around calling people perverts. You don't know anything about them. Isn't it possible? that there's more going on here than you understand? I mean, couldn't it be physiological and psychological reasons that cause these people to go through the stigma and the medical procedures in order to transition? I mean, it's not really easy to cut your fucking dick off. Exactly. These people are freaking nuts. I, I don't think that that's it, Master. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Oh yeah? Well, listen to this. Female. However, the vast majority of people, it's clear that they're either male or female. And if their brain is giving them the idea that there's something that they're not, then they have a disorder. And when I say disorder, I mean something that doesn't follow normal psychological phenomena. For Jay, a person would object. Gender and sex are two different things. And my response to that is, it isn't. Gender is not something we cannot deduce or quantify. There's a reason why the majority of people don't identify as one of the over 60 genders that exist out there from two-spirited to gender queer. There's a reason why people who are trans feel uncomfortable in their own bodies. It's because they're either external sources, society or culture, or internal sources, gender identity disorder, that convinces them they are not the gender that they're born with. Boom! Checkmate, motherfucker! How about that? How about what? Just because Black Skullnik says it's true doesn't make it so. I mean, just because he looks like Revenge of the Nerds doesn't make him smart. If intelligence were determined by looks, I would have the Nobel Prize. And conversely, just because people feel like they're women doesn't mean that they are. Listen to Black Skullnik here. But Jay, the same person, would object again. Why can't we just let people do what they want and live their own lives? Why does it even matter? It matters because we're creating a culture where people are not in touch with reality and the truth in general. Yeah, people like you. Yeah, don't worry guys. We're getting into the crazy soon. But first I wanted to address Black Skullnik here. You see, a lot of people seem to think this way. That transgenderism is some sort of disease or mental illness when it is not.
It is a physiological and medical condition with actual roots in science and medicine. And I think Black Skullnick knows that. After all, he deliberately uses an out-of-date term called gender identity disorder when that term has been discredited and replaced with the more correct term of gender dysphoria. Gender identity disorder. Yeah, just like that. Anyway, using the term gender identity disorder to describe transsexual people is about as accurate as using the term four humors to describe illness. You see, once upon a time, people thought that illness was caused by an imbalance in the four body fluids, also known as humors. This has been disproven just like gender identity disorder has been disproven. In fact, in this 2012 article, they describe how, quote, the American Psychiatric Association's Board of Trustees approved changes to the latest version of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, DSM-V, that will remove the term gender identity disorder, GID, which has historically been used by mental health professionals to diagnose transgender individuals. Simultaneously, the term gender dysphoria will be used to describe emotional distress over a marked incongruence between one's experienced gender and assigned gender. Like I said, this article goes back to the year 2012, so maybe Black Skullnick's video is from before that. Well, it turns out that his video was published in 2017, so it's clear. Black Skullnick is purposefully lying to you in order to twist the topic to his favor. What a fucking piece of shit. Now, in order to understand this, one must first accept the fact that men and women are born different. They have different brains even. Men tend to have more white matter whereas females will have more gray matter. There are also many structural differences between the two brains. But what is most interesting is that transgendered people's brains tend to match the brains of the sex that they identify with as opposed to the sex that they were born. This is extremely compelling evidence to suggest that transgendered people are literally trapped in the wrong body. And when you ask transgender people this, they will tell you the same thing. So, now that we have that out of the way, let's get to the crazy. Take it away, Autumn. The transgender population control agenda. Riveting. What should I do? How can I protect myself? I'm protected cause I made this hat from aluminum foil. foil Good idea, Al. Continue, Autumn. Controlling an entire population starts with controlling those who are the minority. The minority then demands for rights and special privileges to silence all opposing voices. Questioning these motives or speaking out against them would be considered discrimination Thus, specific rules are made to control the rest of the population and robbing them of their own thought and free speech. Uh, I think I found a hole in your reasoning. How can you control the whole entire population by controlling the minority? I mean, wouldn't it make more sense to take control of the majority since the majority has the, wait for it, majority of the power? But what do I know? Please continue. Speech. An example of this is the inability to call pregnant women expecting mothers as that would offend those that are intersex and transgender men. Some laws have gone so far as to specifically target children who claim to be transgender. Specific laws are made to protect these few individuals. And one proposal is for letting children as young as five years old choose their own gender and race without parental consent. Transgender youth are rare, and making specific laws to shield them from the world is not only harmful to the child, but also to the parents. With laws essentially promoting the transition of youth 
even medical transition via puberty blockers. It only makes the child who is confused even more so without the ability to grow and learn until they are of legal age to do as they please. I can agree with you here. I don't think that children should be forced to take any medication of any kind, nor do I think that children who aren't mature enough to understand the consequences of their actions should be allowed to make any decisions regarding their future. Ultimately, I think that this should be the decision of the parents. It's nice to finally agree with one of you crazies. Please continue. There are a variety of reasons that can contribute to being transgender, some of which has to do with a form of population control. Since the population has far exceeded what is comfortable in the environment we live in, nature limits the population via a natural form of population control. Since gay and transgender people cannot be produced, they are essential at keeping the population at a manageable size in our ever-crowded world. Studies on animals have shown that increasing the population results in more gay animals. Uh... Citation, please? Seriously, you're completely wrong about this. According to the World Bank's most recent data, there are roughly 60 people per square mile. One square mile has roughly 27 million square feet. If we divide 27 million by 60, we get 450,000. That means that there are 450,000 square feet per person living on the earth today. My apartment is roughly 1,250 square feet, which is way too big for me. I can live with a third of that. But let's just say we allocate 1,250 square feet per person. We would have 21,600 people capable of living within one square mile. That is one square mile of single-story dwellings with one person per 1,250 square feet. You could have 360 times more people living in the allotted area. So, it looks like we're nowhere near any kind of population density that would cause any kind of changes in our physiology. This is assuming that your statement is true, but I'm sure you're going to back it up with evidence. <laughs> yeah, right. So not forget the man-made population control via synthetic endocrine disrupting chemicals. With the increase of these toxic chemicals in our environment that we are exposed to even while in utero, it impacts our endocrine systems or hormones and leads us to having an imbalance of such hormones and various disorders. Transgender people are often believed to have been born in the wrong body, meaning that while in utero, Hormonal changes made the developing brain and body incongruent and not all male and not all female. Now this is where it starts to get interesting. To be clear, estrogen mimickers are present in our environment today. They are in many things from plastics to uh, soybeans to all kinds of things. But the effects of these have not fully been researched or studied. So she's about to make a bunch of wild assumptions here. I hope everyone's got their foil. Due to endocrine disrupting chemicals in our environment today, from plastics in cans, baby formula, medications, even the very food and water we drink, we are bombarded with chemicals that, even in minute amounts, disrupt our hormones and overall health. Some of these chemicals are BPA in plastics and cans, various pesticides like the most commonly used one, glyphosate, which can be found in many conventional foods and in the water supply, and even some food products that contain plant estrogens, also known as phytoestrogens or plant-derived xenoestrogens, such as soy. There is a specific reason why the number of those who identify as transgender, non-binary, and other various genders have been increasing. Some say more people are LGBT because it's easier and more accepting to come out and get treatment these days. Surely that is a component, but there is a great deal missing from this assumption. Okay, what she said there is true, but also not true. Transgenderism is older than estrogen mimickers in our environment. In fact, it goes back as far as history. Even the ancient Greeks had the cult of Sybil, 
the Egyptians had Hatshepsut, who was a woman pharaoh that lived as a man. In fact, when we came to America, the Iroquois Indians had a third gender. So, wrap your head around that. This is not a new thing. As much as people would like to pretend like this is an invention of the modern times, this is actually as old as human society itself. It's just now we live in a time where we can help these people. And you know, what's wrong with being more accepting of people that are different? It just kind of blows my mind that a person suffering from gender dysphoria would come out against it. It sounds like this person hates themselves so much that they're looking for a reason to blame society instead of accepting themselves for who they are. Now, I'm not saying that I understand the struggles of trans people or gay people or anything like that. I don't. But what I do understand is logic, science, and reasoning. And those tools lead me to believe that this is just a natural part of human society. There's no Illuminati agenda here to control the world population because this is older than the Illuminati. And my research shows that we are in no danger of being overpopulated at the present time. But maybe she'll make some better points here. Let's find out. Continue, Autumn. The laws made to protect transgender people are mostly for politicians to gain power and money that have no knowledge or understanding of what it's like being transgender. As the trans and gender variant population is rising, and laws are being passed to limit typical human speech that isn't intended as discriminatory, the future that will come will result in the merger of all into one, merging male and female to create a hybrid gender of non-binary, or much more likely, the lack of gender, a gender, which is to prepare for a transhumanist future. Every living entity on this planet being merged with technology to hybridize humans to create a future. We will see the intended outcome unfold in generations to come. Or maybe society is growing to accept people no matter what they are like. Maybe we are turning into a meritocracy where we judge people by their actions and not by the way they look or what kind of family they come from or where they come from, etc. And you know, that sounds like a much better world to me. So, cool story, bro. Needs more dragons. There's a big conspiracy.